radio program. An addict's guide to the best of British radio with Laurie Taylor. Hello. I wonder how many other British radio stations routinely inspire quite this type of affection. I used to like it because it was really subversive. I used to turn my radio down really, really quiet so my mother couldn't hear it. It was a very good radio station. Well, I think it's a great station and um, hope it keeps going for many more years. A few of the hundreds of thousands of people who will be lining up to wish Radio Caroline happy birthday this week. It's exactly 25 years since those piratical offshore tones first invaded the tranquil mainland of British broadcasting. This is Radio Caroline on 199, your all-day music station. We are on the air every day from 6 in the morning to 6 at night. The time right now is 1 minute past 12, and that means it's time for Christopher Moore. Hello and happy Easter to all of you. This is Christopher Moore with the first record program on Radio Caroline. The first record is by the Rolling Stones, and I'd like to play it for all of the people who work to put the station on the air, and particularly for Ronan. The Rolling Stones. Caroline didn't just launch the careers of half a dozen DJs, but also, for good or ill, accelerated the arrival of popular music radio in Britain. Any real beachcombers around in Clacton late at night in the early 60s might well have been reminded of their namesake's column by the sight of several hundred motorists flashing their headlights on and off in unison at nothing more substantial than the North Sea. They were, in fact, obeying instructions received over their car radios from DJs on the Radio Caroline pirate ship moored several miles offshore. Caroline inspired that type of loyalty. In the days when pop music on radio was confined to the Saturday Club, Caroline was the only station which offered an uninterrupted diet of current favourites. How did we move from that meagre diet of pop to what many might think of as today's indigestible feast? This is Simon D. talking to you on behalf of all of us on Radio Caroline, here, four and a half miles away from Felix Dock. The BBC was just so square. Anything like Radio One was unthought of. Children's favourites. You had to listen to Nelly the Elephant and everything, so, you know, and all that kind of thing for five records, and then maybe you get the Beatles. And that was, that was it, you know, before the pirates came along. This is wonderful Radio London. We'd like the idea of the rebel station, uh, and I think we quite enjoyed the adverts. And also, Kenny Everett and Dave Cash were the people that I really liked, and they said rather outrageous things, and they were very funny. You know, there's an old Chinese proverb, spake by an old Chinese proverbium, which runs... <laughs> I only wish I had an interpreter, but for a moment let me give you my own views. On Big L this week, it's six o'clock. The Rabbit Breakfast Program at nine o'clock, it's Tony. You must be joking. Windsor at 12 o'clock, it's Dave. That's a lovely one there, Dennis. At three o'clock, the man of whom everybody is saying absolutely nothing, Mr. Ed Stewart. At six o'clock, the first man in the Western world to make a death-defying leap from the Whispering Gallery and live. Everett of England. So don't forget all you transistorized people, it's all here on Big Gal. It would be a tiny tranny that you'd have clamped to your ear and also you'd have it under your pillow at night. <laughs> and the batteries would wear down, it would get fainter and fainter, but that's what I remember, that we had them all the time. Just take a lightning companion wherever you go, take a portable radio. I remember seeing it um, in the bay and it was a glorious day. The sea was blue and the sky was blue and there was this ship out in the bay and it just looked wonderful but the seas around the Isle of Man can get very rough and I know it used to be pretty grim apparently for them at times and they used to say, oh, it's been terribly seasick today. And I used to think, oh, yes, and I have seen the seas, the very seas where he was seasick. <laughs> oh, 
not a terrible. It's called Wild Thing. It's by the Trogs on Swing and Radio Boss England. That's tune number five this week of the Boss 40 survey. Yeah, what am I going to say? Oh, yeah, really. You'd wake up in the morning, and the first thing you would do is switch on the radio. We would bring radios to school if we could actually play the music in school as well. I mean, that was really something. You know, all the time, music was, was there, the background and the foreground of your lives.